got a mom. And by the way, my whole mission and my business really focuses on single moms, divorced moms, widows, uh, housewives transitioning to the workforce, or a uh, mom trying to start a business at home. My first client was my mom, built to pay off all her debt, increased cash flow. She just got a real estate license. She built a business. She's involved in network marketing. We're talking within a few years, you know, she's over the age of 50, and I can give her her actual age, over the age of 50, but she's killing it in comparison to the last 40 years she's been working, right? And has been able to accomplish so much in so little time. So hopefully that gives you uh, a lot of inspiration for those that are older, for those that are, you know, oh my God, do I have enough time? Uh, trust me, there's plenty of time. When you rely on Holy Spirit to work through you. Uh, he can work a new thing in you. Uh, and it's really exciting. So, four major numbers. That's what we start off with. Income, expense, debt, and cash flow. Very important. That's where we start. Right. Persons generating 13000 net, I want to know your net income. Gross is cool and all, but I want to know what's, what are you actually taking home in that month. So they bring in nine grand, uh, 13 grand, and they're spending $9,953.37. Okay? Total debt is $81,170. And 12 cents, like I, I to down to the T, right? Net cash flow, uh, we're, look, we're looking at somewhere around $3,046.63. When I was initially working with them, when they first became a client, they did not have a line of credit just yet. So the strategy, like Sebastian said earlier, is we would typically start with debt so, so I'm gonna lay out the uh, the debts that they have. So they've got a credit card, six thousand three sixty is the balance, seventy five monthly minimum payment at an interest rate of nineteen point seven five percent. Okay, we've got a loan. We're looking at. $19,480.24, payment, interest rate 18% on that loan. That is a hot, that is hot. That is not hot, but hot, you know what I mean? Right, so they got a credit card. Another credit card, $20,484.88. Okay, monthly payment is 408. And I encourage you to write these numbers down as well. So when you go home, you can run them again. Okay, uh, you went too fast on this or too fast on that. Uh, you can review it. We've got another credit card, $34,000 in debt. $34,845.692 payment, 10.99%. Uh, Three credit cards, one loan. Follow me so far? Mm -hmm. Cool. So, there are a couple of different options that this person can do. They do not have a mortgage. So the home equity line of credit option off the table. It only applies to those who have mortgages. Anybody in who has a mortgage has a home? Cool, 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 cool. So that means that more than likely, a home equity line of credit is usually one of the best debt tools out of all the different options, in my personal opinion. That's where you'll find the, the, the smallest rates in comparison to a line of credit or a credit card. And the other beautiful thing is you can really combine the, the HELOC with the credit card. Quick question. Regarding the HELOC, is it uh, variable with the issue rates going up? So you've got the option between variable HELOCs or fixed. Typically when you go to fixed, the rate is going to be higher than the variable, typically. Um, 
Now we're in an environment where the rates are starting to go up again, right? So what I like to look for from banks is you start off, it'll be a variable rate of say 4%, but it'll be fixed for the first 12 months, 24 months, 18 months, six months, right? I try to look for those HELOCs that offer to set rate for a set period of time. And then once that is done, then it goes back to the rate prime, prime plus, whatever their interest rate is. Now the beautiful part about that is within that one year, two year time frame, you're wiping out so much debt when you initially start off that by the time the rate goes up, not even gonna matter in most cases. And we're gonna I'm gonna show you how we calculate what the rate is on our debt tools and how little it really matters because we're gonna be able to manipulate, say, a 6%, 7% HELOC rate down to 1%, 2%, right? The bank says your rate is 6%, but what you actually pay is one. So if your mortgage is at a 3.5% rate, which is more, 3.5 or 7? Uh, at first, you're like, well, 7 is more. But then I'm like, well, what's the effective rate? What are you actually paying on a day-to-day -day with that HELOC? And if we can manipulate it below what the amortized rate is of that mortgage, you're in the green. You're gonna go faster than just taking your extra cash flow and making an extra payment each and every month to the mortgage, okay? And that is what really expedites, say, a 30-year down to 10 to 13 years using debt snowball, making extra payments. That's typically the average 10 to 13 years. Velocity banking, five to seven or less. So we can go like nearly 50%, sometimes faster, right? Very, very exciting stuff. So with this particular case, we're looking at a personal line of credit, right? When I'm looking at their income, cash flow, I like to either what was what was what did you say, Sebastian, earlier on um, annual cash flow times three? Is that how, is that how you do it to, to help your client find the, the line of credit limit? Because I usually say like three to five times your income on a monthly basis. I usually kind of guide them because they, a lot of people ask, well, how much should I apply for, right, on a debt tool? When I'm looking at those two numbers. I usually will say, well, three times your monthly net income is not bad at all, you know, in that situation. But what do you typically say? Uh, as far as, I just want to make sure you're on the same page. The, the line of credit uh, should be um, three times your annual cash flow. Right. So when I'm working, so I'll say either 39 grand is 3x their income, you're saying, the 3,000, 46, 63 times 12 times three, right? Yeah. So anywhere from as low as 39 to as high as 109K. Now, there's not a whole lot of personal line of credits in the marketplace that will we'll get you this. But on the business side, yes. Okay, clear with that so far? This is a mom Never heard of Velocity Banking in her life, right? Brand new, she's learning. I'm not gonna encourage her to go for so much because that can cause what? Over leverage, um, we can make mistakes. So I'd like to, hey, let's let's work our way into this. We can always increase our credit lines later on, right? No big deal. So with, this, with these numbers, I'm good with anywhere between a 20, to $30,000 line of credit, and I want to find an interest rate below 10%. You will typically find these lower rate line of credits at the smaller local credit unions. We're in South Florida, so you look up South Florida credit. Uh, in your particular city, even, right, there's a Miami-Dade Federal Credit Union that pretty much covers all of Miami. 
Space Coast may. I'm not sure if they do offer a line of credit. Yeah. Um, they do they follow okay. Tropical Federal Credit Union, Bright Star Credit Union. Um, you just type in local credit unions on Google. And then you go to the banks, you go to banking or loans, and you'll see line of credit, or I might say home equity line of credit. Look for a line of credit, then look at the terms, right? Typically with personal lines of credits, from what I have seen, this isn't, this isn't like rock solid, solid facts here, but from what I have seen with the rates, I have not seen them fluctuate as much as like HELOCs do, am I correct? So I've had a personal line of credit through COVID, before COVID, after COVID, my rate stayed the same, never changed. It's been at 10.99%, never changed, right? Same with many of my other clients, usually the rates kind of stay the same. So credit, personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit, and I'll use the highest number, 10%. I'm gonna show you how I manipulate that down to like maybe one to 2%, right? And if you can find a lower rate, it's even better. The lower the rate, the better, okay? So 30 grand times two thirds, or 66%. That is a, a simple rule that I use for myself. It's worked very well over the years. Um, you can obviously go above the rule, but it's all on your capacity, your personal uh, management of the line of credit itself. So as low as 19.8, as high as 36, obviously we can do more than 36, 30K is the highest credit limit that we have. So let's say we just did 19.8. You would take, we need to determine our chunk, which we just did, based off our cash flow times 12, and then two thirds of the line of credit. That's my rule, you'll see that in my videos all the time. You then say, okay, what's my bar? Let's say you did a chunk of 19.8 and we're gonna decide what we're gonna throw it at. Okay? Most obvious, with that snowball, you do lowest, highest. So I incorporate that same methodology here. I like it, my opinion works pretty well. This would be one, and then we can throw in this. Here would be an example of violating my rule and going a little bit higher for a really large cash flow gain and redirection of interest, right? Very simply, 10% is lower than 19.75 and 18%, pretty easy, right? Nothing crazy there. So 18%, 19.75, this 18% on a loan is most likely amortized, if not mistaken, in this particular case. 19.75 is simple interest, still a higher rate. So just moving this and this into 10 is called debt consolidation, but without using debt consolidation companies where they're gonna rip you with origination fees, right? And pre -penalty, uh, prepayment penalty fees and or screw up your credit. You can do your own debt consolidation strategy just with a line of credit. Now, velocity banking comes into play where we say, all right, let's say we did 19,480, 19,480, 24 plus 6,360. So the chunk would be 25, it's right between, right? That chunk range, 25, 40, 24 for a cash flow gain of 75 plus 67487. So cash flow gain is 749.87. Expenses go down. 749.87 cash flow goes up. Follow me so far? That's clear. This 67487 was principal and interest. 75, principal and interest. But when you move that into a line of credit, guess what? It is 100% principal, right? Because of how we're gonna be paying the line of credit. It's a 
Sebastian mentioned earlier, you need to determine the day that you have the most amount of money, right? In the month, that's typically the beginning or towards the end of a new month. Because if, if we're approaching the end of July, you have July's cash flow from the money you made. And then, boom, uh, July, August hits, you get that first paycheck. And before you even pay a bill, you'll have previous month's cash flow plus that first paycheck. That's when you would make your chunk payment, ideally. So you make your chunk payment, bam, bam, done. Those two debts are gone in, in her situation. And then I dump the 13 plus the previous cash flow I have. Now in her case, she might get paid uh, bi-weekly, so it's like half that number, right? So money comes out of the line of credit, right? That's the first step. And uh, let me draw it like this. So the debt up here at the top, line of credit over here, checking account over here. Money comes out of the line of credit to the checking account. Transfer, withdrawal, that's the terminology. Checking pays the debt off, gone. I reroute the debt to the line of credit. I'm now in debt, same amount of money, 25842 Follow me? Same amount of money. I did not lower my debt with that one move, right? So I'm still in debt over here. I just borrowed from Peter to pay Paul. I still owe Paul, right? <laughs> I paid off Peter. I owe Paul, right? But now Paul, instead of charging me this interest rate, that interest rate, he charged me 10, but now Velocity Bank says, huh, I want to bring that 10 down to 1 to 2, in many cases, zero, not that nothing, zilch, right? How do we do that? The income, part of her 13 in cash flow, whatever it is, say it's like 8 grand, whatever, whatever the number is, that money immediately, the same day I pulled the chunk of 25, 40, 20, boom, paid the debt off. Debt got consolidated to the line of credit. I'm in debt, 25, 8, 40, 2, 4, 8K into the line of credit. And that is 100% principal that very day. If you don't let it go more than 24 hours, you don't give the bank enough time to even charge you interest on your 8K. Now you're only gonna get charged interest on uh, 25,840, 24 minus say eight grand, is now 17,840, 20. Pretty cool stuff, right? Yes. So let's calculate the borrowing cost. That's the next part of our, our process here. So I take the highest balance, 25, 840, 2,4 times 10% equals 2,584 and 2 cents. You divide that by 365 days. Your borrowing cost for however many days, this is how line of credit simple interest works. However many days you owe 25, 840, 20, you pay $7. How many days? Are we going to owe 25, 8, 40, 20, or? One. You said 30 days? <laughs> two weeks. Two weeks? One day. Somebody said one day and then two two. Somebody, I thought I heard somebody say nothing. Two years. Anybody say nothing? I didn't get 25, nothing. I don't owe it. I didn't give them enough time <laughs> for them to calculate it the okay. same day I dumped my income in. So I'm only going to owe here, 17. the 17. So I'll never see that seven, right? But I'm still gonna put it there anyways because I like to overestimate on numbers, create room for error for my clients in case they make mistakes. I lay out the whole strategy and say, okay, now go beat my numbers. Because when you do, it's gonna get you so excited, this, this, this mom's gonna be like, wow, I'm regaining my kingdom authority here on earth, here we go, right? We're gonna get excited. So now 707 on 25842 for the next thing I do is I just minus the income, right? 
minus 13 grams. So 20, 25, 840, 24, minus 13 flat. Brings the balance down to right here. 12,840.24. Take that number, times it by 10%. What do you get? 1284 and two cents. Divide by 365. Now we're down to three dollars and fifty-one cents a day. Okay, interesting, Denzel. Now how do I pay my bills? Because I gotta pay bills. Oh yeah, no problem. All your income's in the line of credit, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna pull out money as you need it, when you need it, the day before the bill is due. Most ideal. You can you can get it down to a T if you get really good. When you're first starting off, I'd say look, every three to five days, pull out a chunk of money so that we don't run negative on our checking account. We're just getting started, get your feet wet, right? You get used to it. Okay, cool. So now we gotta recalculate the expenses, right? because those two expenses are now gone. That's no longer an expense. This is the beauty of velocity here, is I remove the bill. It's no longer there, right? So take 9,953.37 minus 749.87. My new expense number is 9,203.50. So we take 12,840.24 plus 9,203 because over 30 days, 9,203.50 should come out of the line of credit, bringing the balance back up to 22,043.74. Take that number, times it by 10%, divide by 365. You're at six dollars and three cents. Now what do we do? We get the median number. I'm taking back to middle school, right? Simple math here. Add the three, divide by three. You're gonna get an average borrowing cost based on you owing twenty-five eight forty for ten days, twelve eight forty for ten days, and twenty-two thousand for ten days. Does that make sense? That is an overestimation on your borrowing cost you're not actually gonna be paying what the net amount number that I'm gonna to get to is, but let's run it anyway. 603 plus 3.51 plus 707, $16, divide that by three. Your daily average cost of borrowing is $5.53 times that by 30 days we're looking at $166.19. Which is more, or which would you rather do? Pay this, or would you, we can, without even running the numbers, out of that 674.87 at 18%, I guarantee you more than 166 is coming out of that 674 on that 19 thousand. That's probably, should probably a year five, six of that loan. Would you agree with that? Okay, so I've mathematically ran the numbers, made it possible that I can reduce your cost of borrowing, increase your cash flow day one, and put that cash flow together. Number one rule when with Velocity Banking, cash flow together is stronger than when separated. Just like a community of people, a kingdom, is stronger together than when separated, everybody trying to do their own thing. But if we came in common unity, commonwealth, kingdom commonwealth, can you imagine if everybody in this room had enough trust, we engaged in a covenant together where we pool all of our debts together, all of our cash flow together and do velocity banking. Is that possible? Uh-oh, I can take you back to a time called Black Wall Street where they did something like that. Uh-oh, uh-oh, and get you real excited. Now, this place is called the Center for Black Innovation. Well, we could be innovating how we use money together to build the kingdom and be the light on the hill, the, the, the light to many others, being a testimony unto kings and queens when they ask, how the heck are you operating? Mm -hmm. 
I want to do that. Oh, by the way, the way we do it, I know this guy. His name is Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, ba ba ba, give him the whole spiel. Whether they get saved or not, don't matter. We're giving all the glory back to him because that's what he wants. It's for his sake, not ours. So anyways, before I get it back into my preaching mode, we come back to the numbers, right? <laughs> back to the numbers. And we say, well, how do we get this 166 down even further? And here's where the gravy on top starts coming in, where we say, all right, from that 920350, let's, let's just take half that number. I'm sure you can agree nowadays you can run almost anything with credit cards nowadays. Even rent, in some cases, can get run through credit cards. Some people will take credit cards. You can ask your landlord, hey, do you take credit cards? Some might say yes, some might say no. I like to stick with any bill that will not charge me a fee to run that bill, right? So don't just take any bill. Remember, we're trying to offset costs, not increase any unnecessary costs. So you look through your finances, obviously food, gas, miscellaneous, house bills, right, da, da, da. Let's just say it's 4,601.75, that's half of 9203. 50. So 4,601.75, let's say she's got a credit card, 1.5% cash back. Can we find a card that gives 1.5% cash back? That's easy. The harder ones are the three and the five percent. Those are the harder ones to find, right? One point five percent is sixty-nine bucks and two cents, right? So sixty-nine dollars a month in cashback rewards is sixty-nine dollars and two cents less coming out of line of credit. Agreed. That's $69.02 increase on cash flow. Agreed? Cool. So then we can minus it, right? What do we get? 16619 minus 6902. Your borrowing cost is now 9717. And we agree that this is an overestimation, right? So the reality is that number is probably going to be another $15 less. So your actual borrowing cost month one, month one, $80, right? Now, the second month, the, the next highest balance is 22, right? And the cash flow is higher, the expenses are lower. So would you agree that the second month of doing velocity banking, is my borrowing cost gonna be higher or lower? It's gonna be lower, probably by another 10, $15, maybe more than that, depending on how like critique you are with running as many bills as you can through the credit card, keeping money in the line of credit for as long as humanly possible, right? Within three months or less, three, four months, your borrowing cost becomes zero within three to four months. So I'll tell my client, I say, look, uh, Let's take that number, right? That was our, our average here. 97.17, let's times that by, say, six months, right? That's $583.02. Does anybody know the math equation? Because I always forget it. Anybody know how to determine what the borrowing interest rate is from 10% versus that. What what does 583.02 equate to? Anybody know how to figure that one out? I know there's a couple ways to do it, and I always forget, but I look at the original borrowing amount, right? It was 25,840.24 times 10%. So we know 10% is the 2,58. 402. Look how we went from 25 to 583. If that's 10, then this got to be what? Less than 5? Does that make sure anybody know how to do that? I always forget how to do that. that. Who got it? I'm trying to figure out what is the interest rate of 583.02 on 
the, the line of credit itself from, from borrowing and running all these numbers, what does that equate to? If 2,584.02 is 10% of 
fully blown first lien HELOC, mm -hmm. where we get access to like a lot of equity, mm -hmm. and instead of paying it off, we can just continue to do velocity banking, running our income all through it, mm -hmm. but then borrowing from the equity to get the next property, and the next property, and the next asset, and the next deal. And I'll close with that. I don't know if we have time for uh, Q and A or any questions, but those are the numbers. And then there's your resource. I'm willing to exchange, uh, he said community currency, right? I say social currency, right? Your social currency is like, subscribe, comment, right? share, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not sure, like I'm not selling here anything here today. I'm not, I don't wanna sell. I wanna give you 100% value. If you work with Sebastian, you do get me as well when you get his programs because we, we, we do a lot of work together, right? So you get two for one, there's that option. Um, he was giving away things for free. I'm like, that's crazy because his <laughs> services, by the way, if you look at the marketplace out in the world versus in the kingdom, out in the world, you're paying premium retail pricing. We're talking five, 10, 15 grand for what he does. And same for what I do, average velocity banking expert out there, we're talking multiple thousands of dollars to, uh, we're talking five, seven, ten grand, right? So uh, if there's a way I can get people's information, I'm willing to exchange your social currency for either a coaching session, access to my course, right? I want to I throw on top of what he's already been doing. I'm just feeding on top of what he's already, you know, dropped on you guys today. And I'm, I'm going to close out there. Questions, concerns? Are questions? Yes. Okay, so whatever the balance is that I owe on the line of credit, whatever the balance is, take that times it by the rate, and then divide it by 365 to get the daily interest rate. The same could be done on a credit card. A credit card is just a little bit weird. Um, so it's, it's compounded interest daily. Uh, so it's, that's why it takes so long to pay those things off sometimes. So it's really advantageous to just remove the whole thing. And, push it into a HELOC or a PLOC of some sort, and then use that same credit card that's paid off, throw your bills on it, and that buys you 30 to 60 days sometimes, in many cases. I know you said like, withdraw money from your credit card, but what if you have like, balance transfer to your credit card? Like, balance transfers are wonderful. You can incorporate the PLOC, you can make a chunk, and then you do like a double chunk with a 0% credit card with the credit unions, they offer zero balance transfer fee. So zero ba balance transfer fee plus 0% for 12 months. Imagine front loading your bills for 12 months, switching from monthly to annual, like on a car insurance, how you can literally save money from switching from monthly to annual. So you front load it on the credit card, that's temporary cash flow gain, which is more money for you to chunk on the line of credit within that 12 month time frame. By the time the credit card expires, you would have eliminated a godly amount of debt and increased your cash flow, and then you can just use the line of credit to make a chunk of the credit card before you get hit with the interest rate. And then you move the debt to the line of credit, line of credit say at 10%, or well, we just manipulated it back down to 2.5. And like I said, in many cases, you can go down to zero. That's what I try to shoot for with all my clients. Let's try to get the borrowing costs all the way down to zero. Even with overestimated numbers, right? Remember, th this case is most likely zero, but I'm overestimating for 